In this video, I'm going to share with you five items that I think all photographers should own. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. And if this is your first time here, my name is Dan and I make videos about anything related to photography. And today I wanna to share with you five things that I use in my photography that have had a real impact in the whole process of me capturing and editing my photos. So photographers in general always get a really bad rap about how much money we spend on our gear. People say we spend too much money and that we have this thing called gas, which is gear acquisition syndrome. And look, to a degree, it's probably accurate, but if you think about it, photography is our hobby. And even if you work as a professional, at some point you only became a professional because you enjoy taking photographs and you wanted to make that your career. So there's nothing wrong with spending money on your hobby. And the thing is that the photography industry makes thousands of products for us to buy. And none of it is cheap. You know that anything related to photography is really, really expensive. So you always run the risk of wasting money. I know that I've wasted loads of money on gear that in some cases I've never used. But the five things that I'm going to share with you today are five practical items that I think everybody could benefit from owning. Okay, so item number one is an SSD drive. So these are not new, they've been around for a while, but it's only recently I think that the prices have come down uh, where you can purchase one of these with significant uh, or adequate uh, capacity. Now, if you went back two, three years ago, what you might've seen at a photo shoot is something like this. Uh, this is a, sort of the, the traditional sort of drive um, that you would see in a shoot. But if you compare the two drives just in the size, you can see the uh, big, big difference. Now, these ones here, this is supposed to be a rugged drive. Um, all it is really, I think it's just a drive with a silicon case around it. So that is going to protect it against um, if you drop it or if you shake it. Uh, but this still has moving parts inside of, the, inside of the case. Whereas these ones here have no moving parts at all. So this is going to last a lot longer and it's going to be a lot more resistant uh, to being dropped and um, and to shaking. Also, it doesn't weigh as much. So if you do drop it, chances are that it's probably going to be okay, again, because it has no moving parts. Um, this one here is made by Samsung. There, uh, There's different models that they make. This one here in particular, I think is probably the best one for photographers. It's got really good performance. Uh, it doesn't weigh a lot. It's got great capacity. It's super, super fast. And as you can see, it's tiny compared to the old uh, type of drives. Uh, you could, you know, it's probably about four of these equals to one of these. So these ones slip nicely into a camera bag, or you can even put this into a pocket. Um, I'll put the links of all the stuff that I'm going to show you in the description. So if you want to check it out, uh, because I can't read the model on the back of this one. So Samsung do make different ones uh, that are more expensive, but I think this one here is right about. Uh, on the on like uh, the really good balance of performance and price. Okay, item number two is this little tool here from a company called Small Rig. Uh, let me show you this. This is a little multi tool that is designed specifically for photographers or videographers. It's just basically working with cameras and with tripods. And this is like a little um, it's a little multi tool. And what it has is uh, it's got all the different tools that are uh, sort of applicable to um, cameras and tripods in particular. So you'll find in here, you've got your, uh, your traditional uh, sort of um, uh, Phillips screwdriver. Then you've also got your flat uh, screwdriver as well, but it's a nice big one as well. So this is really handy for when you're putting on or taking off a tripod plate off the bottom of your camera. And then other than that, you've also got a selection of different Allen keys as well. And all of these are really, really useful. And the standard sizes that are used in tripods as well as camera cages, uh, if you use a camera cage. But um, these are all of the ones that I've used in the past. I haven't found anything yet that this doesn't fit, any sort of mounting option that I can't do or undo with this. Also, you've got some uh, little screw holes on, on the side of here as well. So you can also uh, keep some additional spare screws, mounting screws, if you need to as well. So you can mount them and they've got various different sizes in there. This is uh, really inexpensive as well. Again, there'll be links in the description for this particular tool here, uh, made by Small Rig. Um, and I think it's something like uh, 20, 30 bucks. Really inexpensive, but really, really useful. I find that I'm using this all the time and it uh, comes in this nice little case so you can put it in your pocket and it's not going to tear through your jeans or anything like that. So uh, this one here gets top marks. Okay, item number three is this charger here. So this is pretty much the only charger that I use these days. 
And I have made a video about this, but if you haven't seen that, the reason why this is such a great charger is that you can charge four batteries at the same time. And each one of these slots has its own circuit. And that is not as common as you might think. A lot of the times they will have uh, just the one circuit, which means that the first battery has to charge before it then moves on to the second battery and the third one and the fourth one. This doesn't do that. This has got four separate circuits. So it will charge all four batteries at the same time. And it will give you a little readout of how far along it is in the charging process. Uh, the other thing that makes this great is that these little plates here, they are replaceable. And so what you can do is you can buy individual plates that suit the type of battery that you want to charge. So in my case, I, uh, I use Canon batteries. I think uh, LP6N or LP6 or something like that. Um, and I've got two plates for the Canon batteries, but I also use the NPF batteries, the Sony ones, uh, for my lights and some of my other equipment. And so I've got two of those plates as well. So I can charge two Canon batteries and two Sony batteries at the same time. But if I wanted to, um, I could just replace all four of them with Canon ones or with Sony ones. And it's fully customizable the way that you set it up. You can buy additional ones of this. You just buy the ones that are, correspond to the battery that you have. And then you just simply just snap them in place and off they go. Um, it's also got, what, what I like, what I love about this, it's just a regular plug at the back. So you don't need um, a power adapter, So, or, or I should say a... a um, a transform or a power supply. If you accidentally forget to leave the cord, the power cord, uh, then you're going to find these cords. Um, they, I mean, they get used in a lot of things. So chances are you're going to have one of these lying around anyway. And um, lastly, it's got a USB port as well. So you can also charge anything that requires USB power. So item number four is a tablet. Now, this is something that I use on all of my edits. I don't use my mouse. And if you've never seen one of these before, essentially, they are a large uh, trackpad, but instead of using your finger, you use a stylus. And uh, using a stylus is going to give you a lot more control than you uh, would get with a mouse. Plus, you also get some extra functionality like uh, pressure sensitivity. So the harder that you press, um, the more ink that you can put uh, on the screen. So uh, you're going to get a lot more control than you can with a mouse. Now, a lot of people... Uh, complaining that they've tried one of these and they just couldn't get used to it. The thing about a um, a tablet is that you really need to use it for a few days uh, before you get the hand of it. But the thing is that you're going to get to a point where you're going to be as fast as you are with a mouse, and then you are going to surpass that. You're going to have uh, you're going to have way more control than with a mouse, and you're going to go a lot faster. And once you get used to the tablet, which only takes maybe a week. Um, you're never going to want to go back to a mouse. Now, this one here is made by a company called Wacom. Again, there's going to be links for all of this stuff in the description, so you can check it out in there. This is the medium-sized one. I think this is the ideal size. Uh, they do make a larger one, but it doesn't work really that well with your typical sort of desk. And the smaller one doesn't give you the level of control and accuracy uh, that you get with the medium one. So I think this is a really this is really the ideal one for a traditional or a typical sort of desk. And uh, I guarantee you, once you start using a tablet, you will never go back to a mouse. And just before we go to the last item, I wanted to ask you for a favor. If you are enjoying this video, please don't forget to give the video a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so as well. I know that most of you are not going to do this, but if you are one of those people that hits the like button or subscribe to the channel, then thank you very much. Now let's jump on to the last item. Okay, so the fifth and final item that I wanna show you is this. This is a calibration tool that allows you to calibrate your monitor. Now, if you've never calibrated your monitor, you probably can't tell that it's most likely off. Um, in this example that I'm going to show you now, I'm going to show you two different monitors. So I've got my laptop on the left and the laptop is calibrated. And then what you're seeing on the right hand side is the monitor that I have. This is the standard uh, profile that came with the monitor. And as you can see, they're very, very different. And the reason for that is that the monitor on the right hand side has not been calibrated. Now, this may not seem like a big deal to you, but if you do a lot of printing or you do a lot of catalog work where the colors of the products that you may be shooting need to be accurate, then you really need to consider calibrating your monitor. So this one here is made by a company called X-Rite. 
Um, you can also get these from other manufacturers as well. There's one called, I think, the Spider Check or the Spider, which is also very popular. Um, the reason I like the uh, x ray versions of these is that they have this um, light sensor on top of it. So this measures your ambient light. So after you've um, calibrated your monitor, you leave this plugged in. It's just a USB plug at the end. But you leave this plugged in and you have this somewhere near your monitor. So I have mine just below my monitor. And what it does is that it's constantly measuring the ambient light in the room. And what it will do is it will either turn the monitor up or down, so the brightness, and uh, so it does it automatically according to uh, the light, the ambient light in the room. And this is really important because most people have their monitors too bright. So um, this way, I don't have to worry about it at all. This is measuring the light uh, constantly. I think it does it every 10 seconds. And the minute that it detects a change, it goes and changes the value or the brightness of my monitor to adjust itself accordingly. So those were the five things that I wanted to show you. I'm really interested in your feedback, whether you own some of these things or maybe you have some alternate versions of these. Um, I'd really like to hear about it. If you have any questions, please don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. That is the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms and you're going to find all those links in the description below. Again, please don't forget to click the like button. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.